Hi folks, welcome to Thursday's edition of the iWrite Radio podcast. Um, we've got Jimmy Hutton in the mobile studio, Wait. St- Stuart in his landlocked studio, Hello there. And, <laughs> and me in the ether. Uh, <laughs> um, we've got FMQs today, Matt Hancock just before FMQs made a statement to uh, the Westminster Parliament about the new, the rejigged, the Scottishification, mm. is that fair, of their, their, their new tiers. Um, I noticed that nothing was said about the change in the English tier system in Holyrood by any Tories today. Uh, we'll kick off with FMQs. Oh, and I think we're going to have a wee mention of the war of words between um, the SNP MPs and the Yes bloggers. We'll finish with that. I think Um, Bruce Wishart had a nice wee comment about that as well. Yeah, I saw that. Um, Well, let's kick off with FMQs. Uh, Jimmy, you managed to catch it today? Yeah, I sat and sat here and watched it, mate, SBTV live, um, streamed beautifully. I thought she struggled a wee bit today. I thought Ruth Davidson was on solid ground and she landed quite a few blows on Nicola. Nicola's answers are like, no, I, we need, we're, we're following the ministerial code. We're um, going through the process to release this legal advice that the parliament demands to see, well, came what, you could have gone through that process months ago, Dull, because you knew this was marching up the path. You chose not to in the hope that you wouldn't have to release the legal advice. And to say that it's standard practice not to release legal advice really holds no water when you've done it three times already. So I think she was on a sugly peg there and she's on a sugly peg over the whole salmon affair. I think we all know that. So I'm not sure what she's got to hide, but clearly there's something to hide and the Tories are not going to let it go. So the quicker they publish the legal advice, the better. Regardless of what they're trying to hide, the cover-up's always worth it. I'm kind of, I can't agree with that. No. If, if, if you start publishing legal advice, you get crap legal advice. Lawyers start thinking about having to defend themselves. This wouldn't be a start, Murray. They've done it three times already. Yeah, okay. But, you know, if there's a lawyer out there that said, you should definitely go ahead with this, my advice is to proceed he's not going to be thought of as being a very good lawyer at the end, after the end result. Yeah, so, but whatever, whatever they're trying to hide, it doesn't matter. The cover-up makes it look worse. And it's, it's not just the legal advice here. We've had John Spinney. I mean, one, one of Ruth Davis's questions, she said that officials are being blocked, which Nicola just asserted that's not the case. Well, it is. John Spinney blocked two officials appearing last week because he said that their appearance would endanger the anonymity of the alphabet women. So why did she assert the exact opposite of what actually happened last week? That's just, it's a kind of mistake, the kind of slip up that Nicola doesn't make in the parliament chamber. And she'd done that today. Look, wow. it, it, don't forget that um, we've also had a letter from Alex Hammond's lawyers accusing the SNP the government of potentially defaming them. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, the, the, the Scottish <laughs> government issued a, a guidance memo to the inquiry team and uh, the lawyers, Levy and, and, and McRae, Alex Salmon's lawyers, say they're, they're, they're not happy. They feel as though they've been defamed. Oh, wait, wait a minute. They issued a memo to whom? The Scottish government issued a memo, of, a memo to the inquiry, the harassment inquiry that we're talking about. So the Scottish government is telling the inquiry what to do. Uh, no. it, it's advising them that uh, it, it, it's making excuses for not delivering up material to the inquiry, which the inquiry wants. But um, it turns out that the, in their description of why they are tardy producing material to the inquiry, they blame uh, Alex Salmon's lawyers. And Alex Salmon's lawyers say, well, they're not to blame. And they feel they're being defamed and they're threatening to sue 
the Scottish government again. So this, the... this is the issue where the court has told Alex Salmon's lawyers that they can't just put everything that they had into the hands of the inquiry. So the, the issue is the, the Scottish government bombarded Alex Salmon's lawyers with about 2,000 documents that need to be checked to see before they're handed over to the inquiry. Uh, they need to be redacted. redacted. And Alex Salmon's lawyers asked for both funding and assistance with staff to do that. And the Scottish government has never, ever got back to them and then blamed the law firm for the tardiness of being able to get this information to the inquiry. Oh, and it's worse than that, Jimmy, because not only that, amongst those 2,000 pages of documents is more, yet more evidence that could have helped Alex Salmon's case, his criminal case. Yeah, there was a couple of documents, there was a couple of bits in that plethora that would have helped Salmon and weren't released to him prior to his criminal case. Right, okay, can we stop right there? There are a couple of documents that Salmon's lawyers are claiming could have been assist of assistance to the defence. Let's mm -hmm. not just presume Alex Salmon's lawyers are telling the truth here. Second thing, what are you complaining about? 2,000 documents. You want them to give them everything, or do you just want to give them them to give what they choose to well, give? They have, they have been, the, the, the lawyers have intimated that some of this was classic obfuscation because it related not one jot to the terms of the inquiry. Okay. They are and accusing the Scottish if, government, i.e. the civil servant, of burying. They, they, they took an attitude of... Um, dumping the stuff that was irrelevant on top of stuff that was relevant. Right, I, so I, I, two I, months I, from now, when it turns out that they only gave them a thousand documents and they start complaining about not getting all the documents, what's your stance going to be? I already have a stance, mate. They've said no. there are 2,000 documents. If there aren't 2,000 documents, Alex Salmon's lawyers are telling porkies. Well, let me, I'm going to quote the, what the letter uh, from the lawyers say. He says, we neither, we nor our client had received a material number of these documents before. This was in spite of formal recovery processes in both the judicial review and a warrant served on the government in the criminal case, which led to a trial in March in which Mr. Salmon was acquitted of sexual assault. Which begs the question, how did the Scottish government find these documents now when they couldn't find them when there was a formal warrant and a judicial review request in front That's of them? That's two previous court cases. One, the judicial right, well, room, minute, the other one, a criminal minute. one. So the failure here is a failure of the people that carried out the, the review. No, it's just the failure of the civil servant. The, well, it's, the, it's, it's a man. failure of the people that went looking for the documents. People that went looking for the documents are civil servants, Nori. The, 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 the warrant was served to the Scottish government. We want this documentation. And they came up with some, but not all of it. And they've come up with some, what, however many months later that was relevant to both the judicial review and the criminal case. Why did they sit on them? How did they suddenly find them? Do you, do you remember when Alex Salmond played the Scottish Parliament, the opposition in the Scottish Parliament, for uh, about two years? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. For about two years on this um, legal advice. He then... <laughs> Cheers, Jimmy. He then nice deduced the legal advice and it didn't have what they'd convinced themselves it had. Do you remember that? I don't remember that case. Uh, well, I, I, he played I, it beautifully. I, I, I admired the, the First Minister at first, minister, uh, first Minister's questions this morning. I mean, she not only, I mean, she, she wields that. The only trouble is she wields this ministerial code at the moment like a shield. So it's, it's like I've got this ministerial code and I can use it here, there and everywhere. It works for me in any direction. But somewhere that's probably going to fail. Well, However, yeah, but I, my big issue with you and Jimmy's stand on this is either you want the ministerial code followed or you don't. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a ministerial code ignored when it suits you and implemented when it doesn't suit you. Well, the question is, Nori, the interpretation of the ministerial code, is it not? She read it out. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. But it's still subject to interpretation. But well, I say no, I admire isn't. the first No, minute. it isn't. The first paragraph says you cannot issue 
the legal advice uh, it's against the ministerial code Which it then goes the on naughty. further down to say under certain circumstances, you can, but you need the permission of the lawyers who wrote that yeah, okay. advice. Yeah, right, right. Look, we, and we will, time will tell. Anyway, she, not only was she under extreme pressure on that first question, second, second question. Richard Leonard, I must admit, he sticks to his guns. He's been going on about care home, the care home tragedy, and I don't think it's over exaggerating to call it a care home tragedy. Tragedy. Can you consider at least a third of the deaths, COVID deaths in Scotland, have taken place there, haven't they? Um, that the pressure was on her quite strongly over that. Um, I must admit, Richard Leonard summed up what he'd been saying, and I thought the, the first minister, her defence on that, was a lot more solid than her defence on the, the the inquiry. Richard Leonard and Willie Rennie are both complete and utter dicks when it comes to this. They both refuse to acknowledge reality. They're manufacturing something here. Nobody knew the effect of letting people out of hospital into care homes. Nobody knew how incompetent care, home, care homes would be about isolating people. And for two grown men to keep harping on about something that quite frankly, it, it's insulting. I mean, Every job. week in, every week out, she says the same thing. And she resists saying, are you so stupid that you don't understand the facts? Because I would have lost the heat by now, especially with Willie Rennie. What part of the test didn't exist three months ago when you were asking for it? Do you not understand, you thick fife knob? The man is a complete Egypt. Opposition is only effective when it is sensible. This right. is fantasy. Okay, calm down. Calm no, down. I won't calm down. I'm getting annoyed with the guy. And students need to be tested every three minutes. Every time they go for a fish supper, students should be tested. Patrick Harvey. Well, I mean, how long do they think it takes to organize testing? Do have you, you think she picks up yet? the phone? Sorry, have you not figured oh, out yet? Fuck. Have you not figured it out yet? It was, it was, clear, it was clear with Patrick Harvey's question. Um, he wants to blame the UK government for the testing problems. But he can't yet. Well, <laughs> you can't test everybody every day. Yes, but the, and the, the only the, the, time a test proves you're not infected is when it's taken. All right, but even Nori, even <sighs> now, yes, even now, Nori, the majority of the testing, care home staff, students, is all done through a, a, a UK government portal and UK run labs, including the one in Glasgow. Although care home testing is moving to become an NHS responsibility. It is, but not, it is still not there well, yet. Well, to quote Willie Rennie, why didn't it happen the week before you instigated the plan? I mean, it drives me mental. Have these guys never organized anything in their life? Do they not understand it takes time? Well, I would let, me, let, let me make a suggestion, an explanation for why the things have gone wrong with the testing. Uh, it, the, the First Minister's government here decided, for the best of reasons, at the start of this pandemic, that the best plan was to go along, to work as closely as possible with the UK government. As it's turned out, the incompetence of the UK government has proved to be a burden on their shoulder, and it's not an easy one to get rid of. OK, well, I'm going to disagree with that right away, because the Scottish government always wanted to use the NHS tests and trace in order to ramp up the number of testing, they had to go along with the UK government's stance because the UK government had the money to pay for the lab in Glasgow. Well, that's exactly what I, you know, that doesn't refute what I've just said. Of course not. I agree with you there. Well, I don't think it was a choice. I don't think they had a choice. What, what about this? <laughs> was it Willie Rennie that came up with the figure for Slovakia? Somebody came up with a the figure they managed oh, to do. I, I, I was thinking, they, they said tested 3 million people. What did they test them for? I'd like to know. 
Well, it, it's, I mean, testing is part of a strategy. I mean, they both uh, Leonard and Willie Rennie seem to think it's a cure. They seem yeah. to think if you get tested, that solves the problem. It okay. doesn't. But look here, in, in any other, on any <sighs> other day, if we didn't have these previous two top main topics, at first minister questions, the launch of the Scottish National in Investment Bank would have been the main topic today. And it just shows you how much action there is going on in politics at the moment. Alistair Allen. He, yeah, he came up with a question. The Scottish National Investment Bank launched today. They'll have funding of £2 billion to invest over the next 10 years. They'll focus on climate change targets. The one phrase that worried me a little was this, uh, it's a net zero economy. Now, that to me suggests it's a net carbon zero. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And this That's term carbon... If you go, if you just talk about carbon and you ignore everything else, you can include investing in new nuclear power stations. That's what worries me this, with the expression. But apart from that, it's to be it's to be applauded. It's launched today. It's fantastic, and he's another numpty. It's Ooh. launched today, and he wants to know what it's doing. It's literally just opened its doors. Yeah. You know, they can't ask questions about what's happening now. Because every time they do, the Scottish government are doing something about it. So they have to ask questions about what's going to happen in the future. Okay. And we discovered that its first investment has been made, and it's in some very a green company. Did, did you get the details on that company? M squared. Quantum innovative, innov uh, innovation uh, monitors climate change, I think. Very good. Apart from uh, that, I've got nothing else on FMQs. Well, I think we have to mention, Michelle, I'm no longer a Tory Ballantyne. Yes, now there's a, a tricky one. I thought she was a Tory list. She stood for leader. MSP. She That's stood for leader. Yeah, but if you're a list MSP, you're only there on the, on the grace of the party you're in. And if you leave the party, how can you stay? Um, I think that's a conundrum that we've already tried to solve and were unable to. Did that happen before? Yeah. What's his name in the SNP? When he lost the whip, it was asked, how can he stay on? But obviously he can. Um, Michelle Ballantyne obviously uh, wants a party where Attila the Hun is in charge. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm right. OK, yeah, I understood what you just said. But which, which, which list? Which SMP? Because there's very few SMP lists, MP, MSPs. Well, it, it's come up before. So there's obviously no way the party can simply replace them with another party member. They must have tenure. You would have, you would have thought, I mean, your constituency at MSP clearly has a, a direct link with the constituency. And yes, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're elected. But if you're off a list, it's surely the party has the power well, to replace you. It's an anomaly. Unless you resign, I think you can sit as long as you want. Oh, well, so we'll, there's a mystery we'll wait for a, a, an answer on. Um, but that was, I thought that was quite funny. Michelle Ballantyne is obviously a blood and guts Tory because she went on crime. Anything else come up? Oh, dear, she fell down in the crime, didn't she? Oh, here's the, the Jackie Bailey one. Oh, I missed that. The, is a repeat, basically, of the type of question that was asked at Westminster of Matt Hancock. Um, why is my constituency, when it's got less cases of infection, in the same tier as the one next door? Right, OK. Because Jackie doesn't understand it's just not numbers. She doesn't understand there's five or six different things they take into account. Um, I look forward, I think I warned about this already when I talked about tears that it was going to be uh, competing um, between numbers. Well, we had to Colin Smith from an Ayrshire Labour MSP on the same game. He was comparing. He was, oh, it was an individual case. Some mother and her kids couldn't go to after school club because it was doing the road uh, and it was in a different county. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah.
And it's so important that people are not going to die because of it. Yeah, well, the First Minister was clear about that. That's the sure. other one, which I'm going to presume was a placed question from Annabel Ewing about BIFAB. All right. Um, because the Scottish government were getting criticised um, by the unions the other day about this. But it turns out it's a barrier that the UK government has failed to remove um, in the way that they issue contracts. The idea is that you can only issue a contract if the person who's getting the contract agrees to use local firms. Um, I'm sure you've heard Labour have banged on about it. I think the Tories even have banged on about it. But it's apparently illegal, so... Well, it might cease to become illegal in January when we're out of the EU, though. Well, here's another one, Nori, that under normal circumstances would be well up near on the front pages. 500 jobs have been lost or are going over the next two months at Capita, at Sky Park. Sky Park, presumably. Is that Eurocentral? Yeah, I think so. I think it's there. Anyway, it's a, uh, 500, what do you call, call centre jobs, I believe. Mm. So that, that would normally be 500 jobs. Normally, as I say, that would be up on, at least on the front pages. It's Jobs just go and they're, put, they're on the back pages nowadays. Well, I don't know if you caught the news about Sunderland. There are strong rumours. Well, I saw the suggestions from, it was like, a, when, when, when was this? Was this today or a few days no, ago? No, it's a couple of days ago. The, the only problem with that news is that the, the German newspapers were uh, reporting what... The, They'd heard in UK, they'd re-reporting what was in UK, UK papers, and it didn't add up to 100% certainty yet. No, no, there was no absolute, there's not been an announcement of any sort. That's, that's that, that is 7,000 jobs at the factory, yeah. and they reckon another three to four times that in the local area. That would totally collapse the Northeast economy. Yep. I can see riots in Newcastle. Matt Hancock. Matt Hancock. Do you know, I'm starting to get a sneaking admiration for that man, simply because he keeps turning. He, he doesn't, he's quite good at talking. I mean, compared to Bo Boris Johnson, you know, Boris should have him as a shield because at least Matt T Hancock can talk in ordinary language. He, he's got that, he does that, lets his jaw drop when he gets caught out. He does that sort of glacate look. Yeah, but he's been trained to, mo to, to carry on regardless. <laughs> just keep talking, just keep talking, just, keep, just talking. keep talking. But he was making a statement in Westminster, uh, and I couldn't help. About the tears. Um, about the new tears, the revamped tears. And I really do think that it should have been headlined. England follows Scotland's levels because they've basically just made each tier um, more difficult, um, right down to the 10 o'clock closing, um, no drink unless you're having a meal, et cetera, et cetera. So it looks very much like our level four. Yeah, at, at the backbench M MPs and Commons from all directions were asking the same kind of questions. Why is my constituency in a higher tier than the one next door when you consider all these other factors. And he did do a very good job of explaining the factors that they're going to take into account, which are basically the same. Do you think the headlines so will be on the, in the tabloids tomorrow will be tears for tears? Fears for tears, maybe. Uh, I don't know. But there was a highlight uh-huh. Oh, hit, oh. Um, both you and Jimmy insisted I got a Philippa Whitford clip. Oh, she was uh, she was class. Well, give me a sec and I'll show it. Excellent. Well, you're getting it. Uh, well, if it's coming up quick straight away, excellent. Ah, uh, she's here. We go. Looking for the sound, Nori, eh? Sorry. It's 
sorry to go back to the beginning i had that clicked you think it would work with a smoother with a another a separate computer uh, next year he also oh, uh, mentioned the need to support you lost your time yes the slot yeah sorry Not folks disaster for scotland there folks you can show it again tomorrow just let oh, people trying to get out well do you want to tell folks what the question was no because I, I, I was too busy prepping but i was I, as soon as i saw her up on i had the sound down trying to prep for the show saw her on in a reflection and went to, to, to catch her and she was i was totally demolishing my hand call. i suppose i i saw more of his response than i saw of her question as usual he, he, he tries to at least she gets respect i tell you what they don't diss her they try to well, i mean she's she's a surgeon hi and knowledgeable and so confident. you don't want to be dissing her no you really don't and you're, you and she's still hands-on she well, goes look, in and cuts meat on her holidays to keep up to speed cuts meat is that what they well, say what do you think aren't we just meat like every other animal I mean, I suppose eventually, yes, as far as a surgeon's concerned. Uh, there was one other comments, uh, Westminster thing I just I wanted to mention, because I noticed this morning when I turned on Twitter that Annalise Dodds was uh, trending on Twitter. And she's obviously had her moment in the, in the sun because she's, she responds to Sunak. She's the Labour... Yeah, uh, she's, she's the La Shadow Chancellor. She's the Shadow Chancellor. And she is very competent. She's got something like 10 years of academic qualifications behind her, under, underpinning her. Uh, and I was trying to figure out what, why she was trending. And then I noticed that there was, she's got enemies because she's Keir's kind of deputy, uh, sorry, Keir's deputy. So she's got Corbyn Hister's as enemies. Was well she not in Tories. Corbyn's cabinet? She might have been, but she's back in, she, she did make some, statement about Corbyn the other day said she was back in Starmer so they don't they, they oh. don't like her and don't forget their civil war in there but on the other thing that having gone to Twitter and stuck in her name to see why she was trending some of the uh, the racist racist the Scottish anti-Scottish racism against her was appalling well I suppose we now have to having started with a wee spat about the uh, civil service inquiry into the Salmond affair, um, we really need to talk about what's happening between Westminster MPs, Alan Smythe and um, Pete Wisher in particular, and the Yes blogging community. Yes. So we had a bit of a... I think we touched on Pete Wisher yesterday, but Alan Smith decided to chip in as well. Um, if Jimmy was here, Jimmy would be referencing Alan Smith's partner, but I don't follow that. However, Alan Smith, even Ruth Wishart, can I just, I can possibly bring up what Ruth Wishart had to say. Can you let me share screen and I, let's see I if think. I can do, do this. I think you can. Yeah, you can. I can, can I? Is that shared yet? No, a minute. I'll, I'll no. share. Jonathan Portes uh, will be in here. I'll share this one and then I'll go to the right one. It's just, well, there we, we are. Ruth Wisher, is that shared? Yeah, we need to write it out, uh, read it out to the. Yes, yes, all right. So, Ruth Wisher, the grand dam of. Uh, Commentators, Scottish commentators, her and uh, Joyce McMillan, I think they're still good journalists. Right. We remind her to Alan Smith. A, telling folks what they can think is never a good look because he was telling people off. Uh, well, we'll get to what he said in a minute. And B, getting indie done will require more than SNP membership. And Alan Smith says, I did no such thing. That is unfair, Ruth. The organized pylon triggered by yesterday's column proves my point, I'm afraid. I don't want to see other people export their agendas into my party. So that's the story. Stop share. Now, um, he wrote an article, and he actually finished the article by referring to bigots. 
I've got the article in front of me, so I can that, start to it. I think the amazing thing about it is that he doesn't seem to understand that political parties are supposed to have a debate, even people that disagree with you. And regardless of whether you're an MEP or an MP, are entitled to differ from you on policy, especially. There are other MPs who well, have an it, opposite opinion to him that are also senior people in the party, like Kenny McCaskill. Well, his big bugbear is this list of people who are anti-GRA and the, what's the other bill? Oh, hate crime. The hate crime bill. So a list has been produced of people who don't support GRA and the hate crime bill. And it's been circulated on social media um, and people who don't, who don't agree with the GRA, et cetera, are asking you to vote these people into positions of power within the SNP. I see nothing wrong with that. I don't understand why that's a problem. But this, but not a, this group worried you. I've got them here. Talk, a, a couple of weeks ago, talking of putting an SNP ribbon on things. This is Alan Smith. It is worth reminding some folk that the SNP Commonweal Group, or more accurately, accurately, the SNP Commonweal Group Limited, and he goes on a bit, you told, this is what you told me two weeks ago, and they weren't a proper group in the SNP, has zero standing with or connection to the party. He then goes on to attack Robin McAlpine. But you agreed, well, but, that's, but you told me two weeks ago this is... I didn't agree with Alan Smith. What I said was that as far as I knew, they weren't an official group within the SNP. I mean, they weren't like a disabled group with a name within the SNP and SNP affiliations. But why does that matter? I mean, if they want to call themselves the common wheel group because they agree with a lot of common wheel policy, they're quite entitled to do that. Well, I mean, I can't think they're probably just the same as the, what was that, the ERG group in the, in the Tories. Well, or, I mean, it would be like us calling ourselves the I right group and saying to people, right, our position is we think all pigs should be painted blue. If you agree with that, here's a list of people who are standing for positions in the party um, that the I right group think you should vote for. Where's the problem here? You can turn around and tell us to go and ram it. You know, it's up to you. Nobody's twisting your arm to vote for these people. They're simply telling you what policies they agree with and disagree with. So that was Pete Wishart one day and then Alan Smith the next. Now they're both, don't forget, Pete's, uh, Pete Wishart's the longest um, standing SNP MP in the House of Commons. Alan Smith was years and years at... Uh, in well, the European Parliament, I was going to say Brussels, but of course it goes to Strasbourg as well. It has a split personality. Um, but then again, there were before him, there was Hugton. I, I can't pronounce the fellow's aye, name. Aye. He was there before Alan, I think, and he's still around as president or, or, or sitting down, standing well, down now. I can only presume that this list of people who are standing are getting more traction than Alan Smith likes. Well, there must be younger and they're, well, they're not part of the establishment, shall we say, whatever oh. the establishment position is. Jimmy's back. All right. Well, look, I've got here, there's one other thing on this issue, right? This is another quote from uh, Alan Smith's piece. I'm very open to a discussion of alternative strategies. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. All right, chaps. Right, we're, st we're discussing Alan Smith, his piece, and here's a, here's a quote from him. I'm very open to a discussion of alternative strategies. I know well there's a lot of passion and enthusiasm out there in our wider membership, but I'm also aware of how public opinion works, and the plan we have is winning. My question is, winning what? You're not winning a referendum. You might be winning towards getting re-elected, but where's, where's the... Well, what he question? means is it's winning for the SNP. Yeah, but I mean, the SNP are doing really well. It's not winning us a referendum. Mm. That's what I'm asking. Well, I mean, remember, both Pete Wisher and Alan Smith 
appear to equate Scottish independence solely with the SNP. Well, that's it, what Ruth it was a, 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 rep a replied to him about, didn't she? Well, I mean, it was one of the things I pointed out in Pete, Pete Wishart's piece. It seems that the only political party that you can have an affiliation with in his mind, if you're an independent supporter, is the SNP. Yeah, and, and as I said, Ruth Wisher reminded him that they're going to need a lot more than the SNP membership to yeah, win exactly. independence. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think both of them are. I'd agree with um, Pete Bell. He had a pop at both of them today. The they seem to be becoming subsumed in the cult of their own personality. Particularly Alan Smith. He seems to think that the sun shines out his part of these days. Perhaps his wee boy toy who tends to offend everybody on Twitter every time could tell us that that's actually true. I have to tell you, Stuart said that if you'd been here, um, his boyfriend would have got a mention. I yeah. partner, I called him, but uh, we, we Jordan, uh, he does like to offend people on Twitter. Um, yeah. I, 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 I agree with Pete Bell when Alan Smith was in Europe. I thought he was doing a cracking job. Um, but perhaps that was mostly because the spotlight was very rarely on him. And now that he's a bit more in the spotlight, he seems to be, I think, he's being found wanting on numerous but, occasions already now. Well, there is one other quote from Alan Smith that uh, might get us arguing a bit. He says here, talking about wings, Stuart, Ca uh, Stuart Campbell, the Wee Blue Book was a significant contribution to the 2014 campaign. I emulated it in the 2016 EU referendum with the, with the Wee Blue Book. I never even saw it. But these days it is a sad, busted flush, well past the point of utility. The site all but constantly berates us for obsession on trans rights, but I see nowhere more obsessed with the issue than that site. In I, other I, words, he doesn't agree with me. He doesn't agree with me, so I'll just deflect and have a pop at him. That'll be the same wings that I believe had something like 900,000 hits last month, as opposed to Alan Smith, who whatever blog he puts out is going to get about 1,000 if he's lucky. Well, my, I have a huge problem with wings. Um, I'm terrified every time he tells me something bad's going to happen with right. in, with Andy right. because he's usually right exactly well, I mean, he is. has to be one of the best political commentators we've got well what worries me is that the work he does at digging out and and, and, and rebutting that the SNP should be doing and yeah. and how easy is it going to be to shall we say put the fix in on Stuart Campbell some one way or a frightener so that he has to give up one man we depend so much on the information that comes from one man. Well, you're right, Stuart. There's an awful lot of information that wouldn't be in the public domain were it not for Wings. Um, I perhaps, perhaps that's why so many in the SNP find them quite so objectionable. Because well, it, they put it, a it, lot into the public domain that they didn't want there. He's a truth teller. And, I mean, one of the things about Wings that... And I do. I get upset with him as well. You know, oh, mate, let's, say, let's be Stuart, clear. don't go there. You know, how many the times? A, the man's a horse's ass. He's an absolute horse's ass, but he's brilliant at what he does. And what he does is vital at the moment. You know, who else is going to give us that information? As Stuart said, the SNP set up a rebuttal unit and we've never heard a bloody thing for, from them in months. And I actually... I think it's failed, partly because Wings does such a good job. Why would you go to a second-class rebuttal unit? <laughs> Surely the SNP want to be taking Wings' material and polishing it a wee bit. Well, th did you see what he's quoted today? He didn't, have, he didn't write much today with Stuart Campbell, but he, put, he, he published a, an answer to an FOI, a Freedom of Information, and it shows that only seven, well, I'm not going to go into the detail, but it simply says that he, it only took him a week to produce on his, on his own the wee blue book, which all of us at the time said was a very useful well, book. If he's claiming he did it on his own, there was two or three people involved with that. Well, he's claiming and, to do and one of them is now an SNP councillor who he's fallen out with. Oh, well, there you go. But he claims he did it on his own in today's... Um, uh, I think he got a bit of help. 
But I mean, the up the upshot of it all is these two MPs are causing more bother. I mean, the smart move would have been to shut your mouth and keep your head down. I, I agree. Um, but no, they they have such a high opinion of themselves. I think Pete that's Wishart definitely what I the feeling I get. Pete Wishart trying to help you so, mate. He still wants to be a pop star. Mm, well, right. uh, and he wanted to be a uh, speaker. He thought he had a chance of being speaker at the House of Commons. I, well, I think he's got a sense of fun, shall we say. Well, let's be honest. Even even to apply for that job is reprehensible for somebody in the SNP. I, I think he does quite a good job of his uh, Scottish committee. I think um, it's risible. I've because... watched it a couple of times and I think it's risible, mate. It's they, didn't, they don't ask the questions that the, the SNP membership or the Yes movement want asked. They ask inanities. And frankly, uh, I'm getting to the point where I'd, I'd see the back of Pete Wishart, mate. I'd get rid. Well, it's strange. Both of them have very slim majorities. Mm -hmm. And both of them will struggle to get foot soldiers out to... Um, work for them in the next campaign should they be standing. Four years, though. Fortunately, they've got four years of 80 grand a year plus their oh, lavish oh, accounts. Oh, to hopefully, they won't have four that. years. Mm. Hopefully, they'll be hanged before that. Can but hope, mate. Anything else strike anybody today? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've got another oh. story. Laura Koonsberg's been roasted. Absolutely roasted. Apparently, did you, did anybody have evidence for this? Because I'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, uh, she was on Joe Coburn's show yesterday, and I didn't see her on it. But uh, we, she's been accused of promoting economic illiteracy after its chief political editor claimed that the Tories were being forced into the cuts announced in today's spending review because the UK had no money left. Now, I can tell you, coming back at her, right, sitting right beside her, was the BBC's uh, um, financial correspondent, Islam. What's his name? Oh, Faisal. Faisal. Faisal Islam, the corporation's economic editor, was sat right beside her. And he says the cost of funding any borrowing is actually at a record low. Record lows for how much we are going to pay for this amount of debt. Right, and then there's another, Francis Coppola, an economic expert oh, yeah. actor. We've got, um, we've got them all here. Jonathan Portis, professor of economics at King's College, a actor. Julian Jessops at the Institute of Economic Affairs, a actor. Chris Marsh, econ economist with the IMF, a actor. And even George Caravan had a go at her. Do you, do you think she was applying for a job? She was maybe annoyed that she'd, she didn't get the job that Allegra Stratton got. Maybe she's after... Allegra's old one. Um, I think, I, I just, I, I, I think, I'm not going to say she's lazy because she runs about Westminster, like in trainers, getting from here to there to everywhere. I, I just think that she doesn't get the time to sit down and go, now, wait a minute, let me think about this. I mean, was she sitting in the studio when Sunak was making the announcement? Yes. She was in the studio all day yesterday. Yeah, you know, so, she, so watch it. she would have had barely any time to think about it anyway. Well, and you know, the, 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 the it just means she's not qualified. The, the real scandal is she's been accused of promoting Tory austerity because it's the only reason to say what she said is to justify tax, um, you know, cuts, basically, and austerity. Agenda, Aye, that's what she, was, she was basically sorry, she, sorry. She, as soon as giving rich people more tax, excuse me, more tax cuts, like. Uh, well, she was basically being a, a spokesman for Sunak yesterday. She was basically the Tory in his line. And we're going to get, I mean, as as we said yesterday, we're going to get more of this. Oh, the poor private sector only getting their wages up, so the public sector need to get slashed as well. Yeah, well, as I said yesterday, that depends on the way you count the, count the figures, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm delighted because when it turns out that Tory donors made a bloody fortune 
Um, all the other people like us that donate to other causes will obviously be getting a tax cut as well. Well, I noticed that um, Matt Hancock got pulled for one of the details in Sunak's statement today. That didn't didn't necessarily jump out of Sunak's statement yesterday. But there's another 10 billion going into England's test and trade. So that takes that now up to 22 billion, which is a hell of a lot of money for a test and trade system that doesn't work. You know, they're getting, what, 60, 65%? Uh, it's an awful lot of money to give to companies like Serco that are serial failures in delivery. You know, they what, anything that they take on board for the government, they have absolutely is balls it, up over it lately. Is it going into Serco? Or is it going into local test and it's trace? Not, no, no, it's, 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 no, no, it's going into the test and trace system, the national test and trace system, which local test and traces haven't to pick up the pieces of because Serco are quite so bad. Right, no, I'm just wondering if it if it's a, a way to fund what they should have funded in the beginning, which no. was the local system. No, nah, basically they're doubling down on the private sector being able to finally deliver on test and trace, which right. we're seeing very little evidence of so far. When does the uh, not salmon inquiry sit again? Good question. I can't keep up. I don't think it's. I, I don't think they have any more scheduled meetings at the moment because Linda Fabiani is basically saying, "Give us the documentation that we need to carry on." Mm. I think she's kind of drawn a line in the sand. Um, we're no meeting again until such time as it's worth a worthwhile meeting you know, again. I mean, you put what you missed while you were out earning a crust, Jimmy, was that we discussed the, this letter from Salmon's lawyers um, mm -hmm. and they're threatening to, to sue the government again. Uh, so, you know, this could, be, this could totally change the situation. A third case of suing the government. Well, maybe it would... I don't know, maybe the tree, something needs to happen there. Some, somebody needs to shake the tree and for me to come at me. The, the actual parliamentary inquiry, I think, is a waste of time, G given that Liz Lloyd, who is central to everything that has happened here, has frequently said she's not going to appear in front of the committee. And if we're not going to get Judith McKinnon coming back and actually telling us the truth and what she now remembers now that she's um, bubbled a couple of things, why bother? You know, let's go straight to a judicial inquiry of that particular because um, there's still a judicial okay. required outstanding of that whole thing, isn't there? Is there? I believe there is, mate. I think there's maybe there was maybe a parliamentary inquiry and a judicial inquiry into everything that went on that brought about this disaster. Uh, I mean, it's it's up sure to a million. Right. It's up to a million pounds now that it's I'm, not, that. I'm, I'm not sure that's been agreed to. A judicial inquiry, doubt it. I certainly wouldn't agree to it if I was them. Not until we've got a majority after May. Well, mate, if there is a judicial inquiry, it's not going to happen for at least an hour, two years. We're running bloody months behind in normal court cases, never mind something like that. Yeah, well, I'll think about agreeing to it then, maybe. <laughs> hmm. I'm just being realistic here. Yeah, well, um, as I say, if, if I didn't see any point in the First Minister standing up in front of that committee and telling them what she's got to tell them if her chief of staff isn't going to come along either before or behind her and tell them anything. Well, because the clearly First Nicola Minister... Just gonna, clearly, though, Nicola will just deflect certain things onto Liz Lloyd. Well, Safe the first... the knowledge that Liz Lloyd isn't going to appear. The First Minister is getting away with this, I'm sorry. On, on every level because she's basically said, now to do with me, at this point, I am stepping away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the trouble well, is... John what, Swinney will carry the can for it. Yeah, but the trouble is, what they're determined will not come out is the information that what happened in, during the end of November 2017 to the 20th of December. When uh, 20th of December, the First Minister recused herself. If, yeah. if that month of uh, drafts by uh, that, forget his name now, John Dykes or something similar. What hasn't, what do you think hasn't come out? 
I th well, I'll tell you what I think, mate. I think Nicola was told, it was Alex Salmon, was told to the complainers one thought, Ken, what? I'm getting myself a million miles away for this. I want nothing to do with it. Well, she knew that in November. She said yeah. that she knew that in November. 2017. Yeah, but, she, yeah, but, yeah, but she then spent that month of December making sure that none of the shit would splatter onto her. And quite right, too. Clever lassie. Yeah, but she well, wasn't. You, you might think that could be possibly common. Yeah, she, she wasn't recused until the 20th of December, whereas the, the the information that they're keeping suppressed is about what happened in the month of November and up to the 20th of December. I think it was absolutely incumbent on her to be 100% on top of this entire investigation. As First Minister. She couldn't have um, done it, Jimmy. She, she couldn't she could have touched me. it with a barge pole. You see, you, see, you see that, mate. You see that. But at the end of the day, every decision should be made by her at that point. She knew uh, exactly what was she knew what was going on. She knows all the characters. She knows all the women that we don't know. She knows whether they're trustworthy. You know what I mean? She knew all of that and decided to Kemo, I'm getting no responsibility here because this is a can of worms and I didn't want any worm shit on me. She'd have, yeah, exactly. She'd have been off her head to get involved. It's her job. She's first minister. No, this, it, it's this, her it, job to be even handed. It's her job to turn no, around and, and say, for, I forget, know all these people, therefore I'm not even getting handed. involved. She has to put in place an investigatory procedure that could have dealt with this system, and instead she worried about protecting her own arse. She's hung the woman out to dry, she's hung Alex Salmond out to dry, and her main interest was keeping her hands as clean as possible. Yeah, but the yeah. first... Barry, the first... I, admi I admire her greatly, but basically, she's done a Pontius pilot. She's made no decision. Oh. We admire well, her. Look, the first person to resign should have been Leslie Evans. Because she's already admitted failures right from the start. Well... And the question arises... I'm, I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, she did the right thing, both politically, incidentally, but the fact that she was close to Sam and the fact that she was close to the women, if she was, um, uh, meant she had to walk away. Or she anyway, was being accused of being biased. Yeah, but, yeah, but Nori, she, ha she maybe did have to recuse herself, but she should have put in place a process that could deal with this efficiently, and she bloody didn't. Hence the reason we are where we are now, because I've... the process that was put in place was flawed. Well, it what are you unlawful. talking about? And the tainted. process that's being inquired into now. Aye, that she she oversaw all that, and she was meant to be until that December the twentieth or whatever. She was meant to be the final arbiter of everything that was put in place, and then she basically washed her hands of it because it was too dirty. Right. But that process has let everyone down, and that absolutely is down to Nicola's decision not to to deal with this correctly, and instead say. Okay, what, Leslie, you did it for me. Well, she signed off on it, Jimmy, so she's got a responsibility whether she likes it or not. Nah, she did right sign on off on it. But she was also meant to be the final arbiter. She, um, all these I thought things the were, point were of it go. was to take her out of that position. And that so came that could up, be... I, but Nori, that happened overnight. All the way through the process, she was to be that the one... That was signed off in November. No, she... There was, all through the process, the First Minister's office was deeply and centrally involved in the making uh, and the uh, and the arbitration of these allegations, right to the point where Nicola decided she didn't want to be any longer. That happened basically overnight. And that I, was I, probably I, on the advice well, of Liz Lloyd, and hence the reason that Liz Lloyd is not going to appear, because Liz Lloyd well, would have to say, I told Nicola, Get yourself a million miles away for that head. All right. They're, they're, they're right. They're right. Up until the 20th of December, the last change to the process a lot, and the drafts, the different drafts of the, the procedure that they were coming up with, the last change was to remove the responsibility of the First Minister, whoever it was, to decide on the, the uh, application of the ministerial code. Up to the point on the this has got nothing to do with the ministerial. It code. is all to do with the ministerial code because it no, was... th this is an issue to do with civil service. It, it the was... ministerial code stands separately. No, the moment they the the, the possibility of pros of um, 
dealing with Alex Salmond, the former minister, came up. It meant that she would have to decide because the, the, the first minister has to make the decision if it's a breach of the mysterious code. And it would have been a breach of the mysterious code because it would have got involved with... Oh, the... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Stuart. Don't you not know that? Alex guys, Salmond guys, was not get, a minister. Guys, didn't, he get, didn't he get bogged down in that? Didn't he get bogged down Two in the minutiae of it? That's where we're going to now. We're absolutely bogged down in the minutiae of it. The reality is, Nicola took a decision to protect her own arse. She didn't take that decision to protect the parliament or the party. She took it to protect her own arse. And it's bounced back. And that decision has harmed every single person involved in this, in the entire case. Where we differ, Jimmy, is why she had to take that decision. Because she would have got slaughtered because she would have been accused of bias. But she's not getting she's not getting slaughtered now. I'm not saying that she isn't getting slaughtered now. I'm saying she would have got slaughtered had she stayed in the control seat over this. Sorry, she just got roasted in Parliament by Baroness Faxo because uh, she's not got a leg to stand on. That's an opinion you and I differ on. She's given the Tory party a massive stick to beat the SNP with. And, and they would have had a massive stick. Week. They would have had a massive stick if she'd stayed in charge of it because they would have been accusing her of bias at this point. It would have been, you knew this was going to go wrong. You let Alex Salmon get away with this because you were in charge of it. You, you might be right with that point, but right now, why is she still covering it up? Why, why are they still withholding documentation? Why are they still withholding civil servants from appearing in front of that committee? Get Lance Boyle, get over and done with. This is well, going to end up costing us an SNP majority if it all blows up in March or something next year. Well, I'm, I'm not sure I disagree with you on that one. Um, get it over with. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, 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 as, I say, as I said to Stuart, I remember Alex Salmond playing the opposition upside down about releasing the uh, legal advice. Oh, again, guys. Given. <laughs> okay. I think okay, it's time, time we wound this one up anyway. Yeah, let's do hey, that. Jimmy. Cheers, James. Thanks. Don't, mate. No, I've not got a machine. Uh, the guy behind the other one, mate. That was Jimmy getting a fair. Yeah. We're not getting a fair. We're not getting a fair, but anyway. Um, okay, we'll call it a day at that because we're just going to end up ripping each other's throats out anyway. Uh, thanks for being with us, Stuart. That's okay. And as I say, thanks to Jimmy. Um, I'm Norris Stewart. Thanks for listening, folks. As you can no doubt tell, this SNP mess is getting everybody a little bit on edge. Yes. See you tomorrow, folks. Happy Friday tomorrow. All right. Cheerio, everybody. Cheers for now.